Welcome back to the Friday Vibe for July 14th, 2023. My name is Andrew Ayers. I'm an estate planning and business law attorney with offices in Edina, Minnesota and New York City. Let's look at five questions in five minutes that came up this week during consultations and during conversations with clients. Question number one this week, why should I settle my case versus going to trial? This came up in the context of working out a settlement at a trial this week uh, where the defendant owed my client money and acknowledged that he owed my client money and wanted to settle the case but wasn't sure if it's better to just go to trial and have the judge enter an order versus entering into a settlement agreement. And I can't represent him. He's the other party. However, part of what we explained was that the difference between a settlement and a final judgment is that a judgment is owed immediately for the amount in the judgment and it earns interest. Whereas in this case, our settlement agreement was going to allow the defendant to pay out money over time. So he doesn't have to pay the full amount tomorrow. He's actually going to extend the payments out over about a year and make monthly payments until everything is paid off. So one of the advantages of actually getting into a settlement is that you don't necessarily have to pay everything that day. Question two, should I do an operating agreement for my existing LLCs? I spoke to a couple of clients earlier this week. They've been operating successful businesses. They have a few of them uh, in a couple of different industries and they're working hard. And you know, when back in the day when they set up their company, they just went to LegalZoom or some kind of online service and they set up their business and they've just been operating. Uh, the accountant does the books. They do the work. They're getting paid. Everything is fine. Taxes are filed. It's just one of the things they haven't done is actually do their corporate books. In this case, it's important that they do it because the two partners own a variety of businesses together and relatively soon, chances are they're going to divide up those businesses where one partner takes over one business, another takes over a different business. And we want to make sure we have a process for that to have happen in a smooth way. We want that transition to be laid out in your operating agreement so we don't have any fights when that time comes. Because without the operating agreement, if you can't come to an agreement on what to do, you've got to go to court to settle it out. Question three this week, should I move an inherited property into an LLC? So I spoke to a nice young lady who had inherited property from her parents, and she actually has been renting it out, and things are going great. She has renters. It's been a few years now, but it's just been in her name, and her question was, should she move that inherited property into an LLC, or should she just keep it in her name? If you're going to put it into an LLC, remember, we have to make sure we talk to the mortgage company if there is one. In this case, it was her parents' house. There is no mortgage on the property, so we don't have to wait for their approval. The flip side is if you don't want to do an LLC, what you want to make sure you do is that you have enough insurance coverage on your property so that that's going to protect you in case there's any kind of a lawsuit or any problem with the house. You have an insurance company that's properly underwriting and insuring the house for you that gives you many of the same protections of having an LLC. But if you want to keep that house for future generations, as opposed to having to deal with it as an asset in probate, moving it into an LLC with a proper operating agreement with provisions on succession planning will be the easy way to keep that property without having to have it go through probate. Question four, do I need an estate plan or do I just need powers of attorney? And this is a pretty common question I get. Uh, most people who come to my office understand the need for a healthcare power of attorney and probably a financial power of attorney as well. Both of these documents will be used when you become either sick or incapacitated in some way and you're not able to speak for yourself and manage your own affairs. Obviously, on the financial side, that's going to be a financial power of attorney for your healthcare decisions. It's a healthcare power of attorney or a healthcare directive. Now, the question was on top of that, do I still need a will? And while many people, if they don't have a lot of other assets, think they don't necessarily need a will, if you have children under 18, you need a will to appoint a guardian in case something happens to you. But even if you don't and you think, I don't have a lot of money and there's no need for it, you never know what's going to happen. And that will can ser serve as a guidepost for your family to be able to wrap up your assets in your estate after you're gone. Let's say you've done a great job of planning and all of your assets have beneficiary designations on it, so you don't think you're worried. But at the time of your death, that maybe there's a life insurance policy you forgot about, or there is some other asset that you hadn't thought of in a while. That will will at least create the guidepost and the guidelines and have your legacy crafted the way you want it to happen, as opposed to then leaving without a will and your, your family now has to figure out how to deal with the court and go through their whole processes, and it can be expensive and intimidating. Question number five this week, final question, can I use my trust for more than just owning a business? Uh, and the simple answer is yes. You don't need to have 
just one trust for your business and a separate trust for your family. You can actually have one trust that manages business interests, manages investments for you, manages your other personal assets. So the trust is really a remarkable kind of situation that you can use for your estate planning. It's a great idea for a lot of clients, especially if you're looking to avoid probate in a state like New York, where the surrogates court are really backed up and really hard to deal with. So you can use this trust for a variety of different ways. The important part is to make sure it's properly drafted and that we have the assets properly funded into that trust. So there's your five questions for the week. If you like this, you can hit the like button. You can share it online. You can go over to YouTube and subscribe to the channel for future updates. Uh, which is somewhere out in the Pacific on a cruise right now, but I 